What's up mushroom fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm in my lab here in Denver, Colorado and today I wanted to talk about a quick time saver for quality controlling liquid cultures. So um, I've been working on my freeze drying for long-term storage technique for a few years now and I've had okay success freeze drying mycelium and then bringing it back in a liquid culture. So one of the issues that I have with my process is that when it's freeze drying, it's vacuuming air from the ambient room next door and that is causing a small amount of contaminants to get into the test tubes that I'm using for freeze drying. Now there's still a benefit to having backup cultures that are just freeze dried because I can set them in a box and leave them in the back corner of my lab and I won't have to worry because I'm getting pretty good rates of uh, reanimation of that freeze dried mycelium. However, in order to save time and kind of save a headaches, I like to scan my liquid cultures before moving forward. So this is a Piapino mushroom that was freeze dried and I added about five cc's of honey water and then it ended up growing out pretty well. So in order to check that this is clean mycelium, I'm going to use my microscope here and we'll be using a wet slide prep. So if you didn't see the video on different slide preps, go check out our microscopy series. But I'm just going to be using one of these concave slides to put a few drops of this liquid culture. And then we're going to check it under the microscope to see if it's pure mycelium or if there's any potential bacterial contaminants or yeast. You can't really tell if there's other filamentous fungi, so that is the limitation of this quick QC method, but it does help to kind of put stop points in the procedure where if I do see bacteria in this um, freeze dried sample, I can go back, grab another sample, and then hopefully that one will be clean. So far it's about 50% contamination. I've been doing these tests every six to eight months, and I have had successful oyster mushrooms reanimate after about two years being freeze dried in a test tube. Okay, let's flip this around. I'll get to the scope and post up the video on my computer so we can scan around and look for some bacteria or yeast. Um, hopefully there's none, but I have, a, I have a feeling that we've got some contaminants, which is why I made this video. All right, so I've got my sample here. I will go ahead and prepare this slide while we get this computer going. Now like I said earlier, we're going to be using the concave slides. So just want to make sure that that's oriented correctly. And then I'll just give this sample a nice shake up. And then the, kit, the trick for these is to lay down your glass cover so that you don't get any air bubbles. So we've got a slide prepared. Now let's throw it under the scope. We'll turn on turn on the microscope. And then we're going to open up our software. Let 
once I get this camera hooked up. I had to grab my uh, USB connector, but we're going to jump into this camera here. And I'll go ahead and start to focus in. So I've got this uh, region here on focus and I'm going to record it on the computer so we can see a little better what's going on. But you can see that this region right in here where there's a bunch of clusters of bacteria it looks like possibly a yeast so this almost looks like a budding yeast as well so as you can see there's definitely some limitations you know people could get confused with the different fragments that could be present in the liquid culture but yeah so the next step down would be a oil immersion lens and in order to get a really nice picture we would have to put some stains on here but Right now, I am convinced that this is contaminated, and oh yeah, especially in this region over here. In an ideal liquid culture, you would only see mycelium and not these regions of what appear to be some yeast. Um, so characteristics of yeast are that they're going to be kind of translucent without stain and they'll often be budding so yeast reproduced by budding so here's another one and sometimes you'll even see a germ tube which is a, a tube that's coming out of the yeast cell and that is only indicative on some some yeast like candida albicans for example but yeah I am uh, definitely convinced that there's contaminants in this liquid culture unfortunately so I went ahead and plated the yeast contaminant out on a malt extract auger and you can see it has like a creamy texture to it kind of uh, circular colonies and notably, it smells like bread or beer, which was definitely a giveaway when I was making this liquid culture or when I was making the slide, I instantly smelled that brewer smell. And that was a dead giveaway that there was yeast in this liquid culture. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that quick QC tip on scanning for contaminants on the microscope check out our microscopy series for more information on working with the microscope give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these and until next time much love